you know, we're leaving here about 48 hours for the Yukon. And so, you know, it's important that I keep trying to get as much exercise in as I can. And, you know, this afternoon I'll go hit the gym, do some buys and chest, and I'll try to get five, six miles in this morning. And of course, you know, get a little work in as well. But, uh, you know, exercise and being fit on this one is gonna be, you know, important. Gonna have two weeks in the Yukon, stone sheep, moose, grizzly, whatever we can get an opportunity at. But, you know, it's without being prepared physically, that can be just as bad as it can if you're not prepared mentally or prepared with the right gear, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's gonna be all I can do to make sure I'm ready, ready to go. And that's what I'm trying to do this morning. You know, this is the part that'll you do this regular and keep up your exercise program. You know, it's these sort of things that'll help push you through those difficult times on your hunts. When you need to get to the next ridge or you gotta get over to the next valley. If you can be physically fit as well as mentally prepared, it'll help you big time. And that's why I that's why I stick at this exercising just as much as I do anything else I prepare for in my hunts is I want to know that if I got to get there, I can get there and nothing's going to stop me. Definitely, at least certainly not my physical ability. I'm just about done with this morning's training session. It's going to be about uh, seven miles round trip, about two and a half hours and uh, wrap it up here in a minute and then head uh, head up to my house, get some lunch, and then I'll be heading to the gym again this afternoon for weight training and some core training. But, uh, you know, like I've said, I'm gonna make sure on the sheep hunt that, you know, my physical ability is an asset, not a liability. So, you know, it's important to stay at it as much as you can. And that's what we intend to do. Desire is defined as a strong feeling to have something or wish for something to happen. It's synonymous to ambition, passion, obsession, and urge, all of which are elements we as hunters share. You must have desire to make a goal, and you have to have a goal to make a vision. Desire gets you up early and keeps you up late. This is about your character, man. It's about who you are and who you want to be. It's about productivity and persistence. It's about reaching as high as you can and setting your goals higher than you think you can reach. It's about forcing yourself to take a few more steps and going the extra mile. What moves you? What drives you? If you want to be successful, you have to change your mindset. You have to believe in yourself and put forth the effort which is driven by your desire. Ask yourself the question, what do I want from life? Then ask yourself, how am I going to get there? Once your desire takes over, no one can stop you. It's just a matter of time and energy before you finally break through. It's going to seem endless and tiring at times, but if you persist through the law of averages, eventually it just happens. You have to trust the future and believe in it. If you give up, you prove to yourself that you didn't have the desire. You didn't want it enough. It just wasn't there. That's why doing what you love is the greatest way to start. If you love something, the desire will build and it'll seem effortless. Like the cliche, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. That's the spirit within the desire. That's how it begins.
Your desire is the difference between failure and success. It's what motivates you to find the answers and prove to yourself you can do whatever you set your mind to do. It's the fuel for your fire. It's your accelerator. It's a game changer. Look back and think about a highlight in your life, the most accomplished thing you've ever achieved. Then think about how much effort you put into it. It was your desire that made it happen. That feeling of success and accomplishment is euphoric. You have to go from one desire to the next. You have to pick another passion and repeat what you did before. That's the answer to success. It's called Desire 101. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your desire gives you a goal, but the journey is what lasts forever. The way you got there is the most important part. That's where you learn about yourself and how badly you wanted it. The only person that can answer that question is you. As a hunter, desire is something that comes from within. The Yukon, 186,000 square miles of Canada's most remote and rugged wilderness. A breathtaking landscape, but one with little sympathy for the faint of heart. I've traveled here for the same reason countless sportsmen have before me, to hunt mountain caribou in the ever-elusive Stone Ram. Well, we're making a little different plan today. We have exhausted our horses. And we've actually been doing some pretty long days on them, so they're, uh, they're all pretty worn out, and these guys feel like they need a day's break. So we're actually gonna put our packs on and hike to the top here behind camp and get up on top and have a look. I'm sure it'll take us a few hours to get up there. Certainly will, Jeremiah and I. But uh, I bet these guys can get up there a little faster than us. But anyway, get up there, see if we can't find some sheep. They've said they've seen some up there, uh, you know, sometimes. So we'll get up there and see what we can see. It's day seven. So far my strength is good and my endurance is only getting better. My commitment to mountain training, physical conditioning and nutrition has definitely paid off. This is my time, my hunt, my dream. I will not be denied, no matter what this formidable landscape throws at me. Well, we've come up the mountain quite a ways, probably a couple hours, but we've taken our time, stopped a bit. We're definitely up here where you could find the sheep, but uh, just haven't found them yet. As you can see, it's a pretty, kind of overcast and even down the valleys it's starting to get a little bit hazier so we'll probably stay up here for a little bit we followed a couple of fresh caribou tracks right up this hill just behind us so kind of looking for them as well Good. 
closer. Dead caribou. <laughs> Good That's work. a dead caribou. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We're gonna go down and have a look at our mountain caribou. Come yeah. Yeah, he's got a nice one on him. He's starting to hair up quite a bit. Yeah. Let me just double check my gun here. Okay, we're clean. Here, you can just set her down with it. Wow. Man, that is amazing. Big, beautiful mountain caribou. That is, yeah, I mean, what an awesome animal, huh? It's another critter that you get the opportunity to see only in special places like this in the Yukon. And this is the mountain variety of caribou. There are several subspecies, but this is the mountain caribou that resides up here. And, uh, just a beautiful animal. Of course, he's all wet because it was raining on him and us this morning. It's nice now, luckily, but uh, what a fabulous, beautiful animal. Beautiful cape on him. I'm very fortunate to get this opportunity, and thank you very much, Cole. Yeah, you're very welcome. You did a great job of spotting him and did an even better job of getting us on him. And <laughs> Sprinting. Now we got a beautiful trophy. Thank you. You're welcome. As Cole and Brennan were field dressing the caribou, the unexpected happened. Well, believe it or not, as we were sitting here, those guys are doing the caribou. I start glassing the mountains and found a big ram on top of that far mountain. The issue we got is it's 1.30, it gets dark about 9.30, but we got to get all the way back down to camp, get horses, go down a ways, and then it's really thick down in there according to these guys, and of course he's clear at the top of a steep mountain. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure. Well, we have, uh, we have contemplated our plan. And I think, I think uh, common sense is gonna be the better part of valor here on this one. And I think we're gonna wait till tomorrow. to the basin down below it this morning and we've spotted him he's in the same basin he's just come he's probably come six eight hundred yards maybe roughly across to the right but now he's working his way back to the left um, you know obviously it's gonna be watch him for a while probably to see where he's gonna go to but uh, first thing down we found him so that's a plus finally my time has come my hunt starts now. The hard days in the gym, the exhausting workouts on the mountain, it's payoff time. The stone ram of my dreams is within my grasp, but my sole purpose now is to make my dream become reality. haven't made enough move for us to make a move so we're kind of stuck here if we have to we've decided we're going to stay all night up here on the mountain which is not going to be fun at all but for this ram we're all willing to do it it's just it's you know it's just no fun being this close to him 
eight, nine hundred yards and just no way to make a move with this big giant canyon here. So we've got to let them make a move first and then we got to make a move. So it's cold, it's windy up here. We ain't got a lot of food and we're limited on water. But if we have to, we're going to stay all night. Well, we, uh, we made it through the night. I'll tell you what, it was miserable. None of us slept a wink. Wind blowing, you know, no sleeping bags, just what we had on. It was cold up here. And we're watching the rams again. They haven't moved much, maybe 100 yards down the hill. We're kind of hoping maybe that they'll pick some direction as the sun, as soon as the sun hits them and maybe feed down. If they'll do that, maybe we'll get a crack. But uh, they just they just picked a spot where it's just, there's no way to get to them unless they move somewhere where we can get a chance. So we just got to keep sitting up here in the wind and freezing until we hopefully get a chance to move on them. Recognizing the steepness and difficulty of the terrain, Cole made the decision to leave both our assistant guide and cameraman behind. Our fear was spooking the rams, a chance at this point in the game none of us were willing to take. Once in position, we identified my ram. I got comfortable, steadied my rifle, and took the shot. almost choked up you just uh, you don't get an opportunity like this very often and have guys like this that help you and make some of your dreams come true it's a special moment for me picking our way over to my ram gave me time to reflect on the adventure and the culmination of our success to appreciate the struggles and know that I could overcome adversity to start with a goal and then to realize you have accomplished that goal is what living my life is all about. Let me take my back off here real quick. That is an awesome ram. I mean, an awesome ram. Holy smokes. Oh, I'm so tired. I don't know if I can pick him up, but I'm going to try. Look at this thing. What a beast. If you ever drew up what a stone ram should look like, I can't imagine it looking much better than this. No. Holy cow. And you know, Cole, as we've talked about already, this is really extra special for me because this is my Grand Slam ram. Yeah. You know, this is, this is it. This is the fourth one. Holy cow, he is an absolute bomber. What a beautiful animal, too. At least 12 years old. Big stone ram here in the Yukon. You know, sometimes you wonder if the sacrifices you make are worth it, especially what the hell night we had last night. But uh, as I sit here now, 
I think it was well worth it. I think both of you guys figured out the business.